Can you all hear me? Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Okay, headphones. Hey, everyone. I'm Jonathan. Welcome. Thank you. Well, our, <laughs> thanks, I guess. So I guess we've got, um, okay, Bear, Bear, how do I pronounce your name? Bear. Bear. Okay. Developer Relations. Kazuhiro from Tokyo, right? Yeah, just call me Kaz. Kaz, okay. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> we had Anchor, who's gone. Did we? Was he here? Or oh, this is all. Okay. Oh. Kaz, can you hear me? Hear clearly. No. Good. Great. Okay. We'll just wait for people to come in and settle down. Oh, boy. Hi, sorry about that. I think I, well, first of all, hi, Jonathan. Sorry, I, I probably jumped in and jumped out. And then I think I accidentally kicked Bear because <laughs> I was not sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Digi dig dig digital, digital kick out, right? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I just DM'd her or messaged her in, in the thread to yeah. ask her to reload because that's what worked for me after I screwed around with my settings. Actually, I was, oh, we're back. Welcome. I just, I just had to reload to get unkicked out. Here we are. <laughs> right. So we're, we're right on time eventually. I think we've got a few people here already. Uh, so I just kick kick everything else, uh, kick, kick off the session, right? Um, so welcome to this session. I mean, for those who, who don't know what Slack is, I guess uh, a brief introduction, um, a leading channel-based messaging platform, right? Obviously, millions around the world are using it to unify their teams. And, um, you know, it's an enterprise-grade platform. Now with a new layer of business technology stack, where people can work together more effectively and basically use APIs to design apps and integrate. I mean, there seems to be a lot happening. Um, on the panel today, we've got a set of speakers who are, I would say, very, uh, very competent technically. And um, with, with that, we've also got um, Bear. I don't know your background from LinkedIn, but you're, you're leading the developer, the developer community. We have um, Kaz, who uh, is based in Tokyo. And uh, from, from your LinkedIn, I see that you've been working on open source and Slack and the SDKs for some time now, also using Python and Java. <clears throat> and for Anchor, if I pronounce your name correctly, yeah? Uh, yeah. Based in the Bay Area, is it? Uh, That's right, yeah. I can't imagine what the time is there now. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, almost 10.30 p.m. 10.30, okay. And I see that you're the developer tools lead. Um, managing a team and working with a whole load of languages here, right? So pretty agnostic, Python, Ruby, Go, Node.js. And uh, again, this topic of ecosystem comes up in all of your profiles. All right, so I don't want to talk much longer. I would think that we could get started. The session today is for um, anyone who wants to use Slack uh, design APIs, uh, design an API strategy and build apps. Uh, so the discussion will be based around how to build the apps, 
how to be a happy developer using the Slack environment and ecosystem. Um, so, so that's my introduction. I, I wonder, could we, could we take it off from there? How, how would you describe Slack and this developer community and, and, and how it services the developer community nowadays? Sure. So our vision with the Slack platform is that we want to make work better for everyone who uses Slack. And that's an expanding group of people that started off with a very strong developer base five or six years ago, uh, where people were happy to migrate over from, from IRC and, and other platforms like HipChat or Campfire. They were familiar with what Slack the product could do for them and their teams. And now that we're seeing more businesses and non-technical users and communities using Slack, uh, there was more of a need for extensions to, to the core client capabilities that make it possible for people to get work done in a lot of different types of, of job function. So one of the things that we care about enabling with our API is a lot more different specialized tooling and experiences inside Slack, inside your workday. So for example, if I am in marketing and I want to be able to source case studies from my colleagues, it would be great if I could build a structured workflow where people could fill out a form with exactly the information that I need to build a case study, and then I can collect those responses. And with Slack, you don't have to build custom code to do that. We've, we've created tools on top of our API and, and inside Slack that make it possible to do those things. And we've, by creating an open API, made it possible for developers to build those uh, apps and experiences for, for their customers as well, who might be interested in using that type of tool at work. Um, but I see you use the word developers, so they come in all shapes and sizes with their favorite environments and languages, and that's catered for. I had a quick look. There seems to be um, sort of a developer environment where you're using these tools. You're using Trello. You're using uh, other tools to communicate how, how the system is evolving. So what's been the, 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 the changes in the developer community? How has it, how has it grown, for example, or how, how do you see it now and in the future? Uh, it's grown quite a lot over the last several years. Um, we have seen it become much more global, especially as Slack the product has localized to uh, languages, not not English. We've had substantial growth in, in Japan, of course, um, and we are seeing uh, people active from all over the world in the Slack community workspace. We have a dedicated Slack workspace where developers who are using our API get to talk to one another. And we also have a lot of meetup groups forming on slackcommunity.com. We've got them in, I think, 36 or 37 countries around the world at this point. So when I saw the API Days event, I see that you've got a workshop happening. You have a booth and, and plenty of ways to interact. So hopefully we'll get some interaction here. It's always a bit strange using the hop-in platform and, and people at lunchtime. So, you know, hopefully you can make yourselves available, let people know how you can be contacted. Um, so for this, we've had a few questions come in already. And um, hey, so maybe I address this to, um, well, I'll let you pick, I'll let you decide. Um, what's your favorite app on Slack at the moment and why? I'll address that to, um, I will sh who shall I pick, who shall I arrow here? Who would like to pick up the question? Yeah. Who hasn't spoken? <laughs> I'll take okay. it. Um, so it's really hard to pick our favorites. It's like picking a favorite child because <laughs> we here at uh, on the platform team, especially at Slack, are, are responsible for trying to grow and cultivate and create uh, uh, all the possibilities for all of our apps to shine. And I think that's what, that's what most parents want for their children as well. But um, there's a few that I use in my workday every day that I think are indispensable for me at this point. Um, one of them is the Google Calendar application. So um, there's a very similar Outlook Calendar application to this. So some of what, what I what makes me enjoy it so much is applicable to that as well. If if you're in the Outlook or Microsoft ecosystem of tools um, like your calendar, uh, but the what makes the Google Calendar app great for me is uh, whenever I'm about to join a meeting, I don't have to think about changing my status to indicate to other folks on my team that. I'm going to be busy for the next, say, half hour or whatever it might be. Uh, the Google Calendar app handles that for me. So it's just like this little quick little thing that it does um, that signals to other people that I might be busy, lets them know in a in a polite and uh, nice way that like, 
hey, Encore might not get back to you for the next hour or something like that. Um, it also allows me to jump right in and see my full day schedule without having to leave Slack, which is where I'm in all day as I get my work done. And uh, that's really nice because a lot of times jumping in and out of browsers, I have like a thousand tabs open and I'm not really sure where to go. And uh, the app home for apps is just right there. It's, I can, as a technical person, I'm really comfortable with keyboard shortcuts. I can command K and type in G Cal and hit enter and know that I'm going straight there, which is really nice. Um, so that's what I would say is my favorite app. Thanks for being unbiased. And anyway, that, that's a cheap question because I, I, I'm just looking for tips and tricks because the organizers of this event are, are using Slack as well. So it's always good to hear the best so-called features. I'm, I mean, Kaz, I didn't want to leave you out of this. I know it's a, it's a, a difficult question as there's so many. Do, do, do you have any contribution to your favorite app? On Slack. Yeah, sure. Of course, as as Anka mentioned, uh, yeah, we cannot. It's hard to pick up one app, but uh, in addition to Google Calendar, the the Zoom and other video conference tools integrations are really smooth in Slack. So when Google Calendar is connected with Zoom and the specific uh, meeting has a Zoom call with it, so we can directly access the Zoom call from Slack. So that's a smoothly integrated with Google Calendar and also Slack. So the the kind of combination of those several apps is a really good way to utilize Slack's platform power, I think. I think that's, uh, thanks for that. It's sort of tying into Zoom and we're getting, we've heard it from a couple of developers, right? going into the business, you know, balancing the business user's skill set and level, right, with the developers. So it's a favorite for developers and techies, but the business is using it. So, so this is the question, really, um, how does Slack keep that balance? And, and it also ties into a question we've had on the chat. How do, you, how do we tie business goals and outcomes to API adoption? So very much a question tied to the business side. What might the business want and how can Slack and the APIs help the business? So again, it's all about that platform vision of the connected workday, where by adding in the tools that you need, the data you need from other services, the event notifications that you need from systems that you use throughout the workday, you can achieve that, that vision of a smoother, connected, more efficient workday. So all of the, the business outcomes that we're looking for are tied to whether or not people can get more work done successfully in Slack. And that's something that we that we research with our users. It's something that we spend a lot of time talking to customers about. And definitely when we think about API design, when we think about the use cases that we're trying to enable, it's in service of that connected workday. So I think that's a start to your question. But were you were you interested in other things in particular about the business users case? I'm just taking the the conversation from the chat, which was uh, business goals and outcomes. So if any, you know, if that addresses the question, you know, please say so. Uh, and likewise, if there's any other questions, because it's really meant for the uh, the participants, I could always come up with more questions. <laughs> you you could, and, and leading on from what you said, you talked about use cases or user group. Okay, so um, we've got developers here. They've got access to this wonderful platform, the APIs, the communities. But they're developers, right? What what would you say is the journey? Is a product owner needed? Is a business analyst needed? So if I'm running a team and I want to build apps on Slack platform, what, what do I need to really get close to the business and their uh, business goals and turn that into a, a user journey, a, a, you know, a, a UX? Akkor, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think of the ecosystem developers kind of in two large buckets, at least for, for us here at Slack. The first um, is more general, and almost every developer could see themselves in the position to, to use Slack's platform because of this, which is uh, if you work at a company and you have teammates, um, there's probably thousands of little things you do a day that you wish some tool could automate away for you. And Slack's platform is open and accessible and generally really easy to use, at least for the first few quick wins that you want to get from using it and to supercharge your productivity with your team. And so uh, you don't need a product manager. You don't need a, a marketer. You don't need anything. You just you open up the uh, apps api.slack.com, the, the documentation that we have there. You take a quick glance at what what's available. We have 
a great set of tools that we that come from us as well as our third party community um, to get you started in whatever programming language you might be comfortable with. And for a lot of developers, that just means they spend an afternoon exploring, playing, and building something that their team gets a lot of value out of. And the second bucket I would say is uh, developers who are interested in our app directory. And that's a really exciting opportunity for a business actually. So um, there are millions of users on Slack. Uh, Slack is a, a very popular tool and I, I feel fortunate enough to work at a company that's gone through some really cool and interesting growth in the last few years. Um, and that makes it a great opportunity to get your enterprise applications in front of millions of users um, and to build a interface that works inside of Slack and draws them back into whatever product or service you might be building. So let's say you're going to build the next great uh, productivity task manager and you're going to take down Trello. Um, you, could, you could build lots of great little things into Slack that would bring your experience and your product to life for all those millions of users who are using Slack and using all sorts of other great tools to get their work done every day. And the the app directory would be what you would be focused on. And in that case, you do probably want to bring your, your product design team, your PMs, your uh, an engineering team that can um, build with enterprise grade sophistication. So I think what's really interesting about the Slack platform is it scales all the way through that wide, diverse range of developers in terms of interest and uh, value. Okay, is it uh, like you're producing an MVP, uh, like a lean approach to producing things, push something out there, uh, deliver use cases quickly? Is there a methodology or a mindset needed to uh, to access this platform and tools? Um, because you talked about going out there and finding problems and solving them quickly. It sounds pretty lean and agile. Um, is there anything else to it? Sure, yeah, I mean, I think it is. I think uh, we hear a lot of stories about how developers try to scratch their own itch by just building a quick little fix for themselves um, in the in the manner that I was describing first, which is like, hey, I have a little quick idea for how I can enable my team to automate away a tedious or repetitive task that we have. And then uh, we hear stories of those ideas turning into entire business concepts. Uh, uh, a few people start using it, a few people start um, letting others know that they really appreciate it and it's something that makes a core part of their work experience better. Uh, and, and companies will then further invest into turning that into potentially a product or a service. So I think there is a little bit of this um, incubation that's possible on the Slack platform because, you know, if you're the customer and uh, you have to, and you want to scratch your own itch, it's a really good formula for, uh, producing something that has value that can also probably scratch that itch for other people as well. Good point. I wonder if any any of the viewers here <clears throat> have a question about any itches that they may have. All right. Anyone watching this has anything that they're burning hair on fire problem that they can think of that could be solved through this platform. I'll give you one example which came in. Um, it's about workflows and automation because this is an enterprise platform. Um, how do you build a successful workflow that caters to both technical people and non-technical users? Let's say a, a, a customer comes in with a product feature and that needs to be built into the enterprise environment as a service, as an app or something, something else within a short time frame to generate value for the business. Um, do you have any examples of that or any, any tips? I'm um, thinking Japan, right, Kaz? Because <laughs> I heard it's taken <laughs> sure. a lot of adoption there. <laughs> yeah, as you may know, in Japan, uh, so many companies tend to have so many internal workflows. Like, uh, I need approval from this manager, and also I need to and a confirmation. I need to confirm the, the validity of the documentation with this person. So in that case, um, there are huge kind of demands about the workflow feature. And uh, last year, we launched the Workflow Builder, which is a built-in feature to easily create workflow inside Slack. So it's a kind of GUI GUI2. So it doesn't require the programming skills and understand great understanding about software and systems, just clicking the button and just adding the steps in a workflow. So it's a quick quick and easiest way, easy way to build a lightweight workflow. But not only that, 
the in the future we will be connecting the workflow the create workflows created by workflow builder with external systems so that's a, that'll be the ultimate goal in the enterprise world there's so many people need to connect with the existing uh, system assets or the internal systems with such workflows so in the future we will be expanding the fields to of the workflow uh, not only for the engineers but also the non-technical people uh, it's interesting because uh, in the enterprise, a lot of these workflows are kept in on pieces of paper, in spreadsheets, and it's very it's unproductive. So technology is coming in to automate that. RPA is one of them, uh, but people still don't realize there's other choices around integration. Um, yeah. So, so again, uh, I think we've only got like, I mean, this is really quick. We've only got like uh, five to 10 minutes left. So uh, I, I would use this also just to, to ask um, you guys, um, how can people contact you if, they, uh, if they're a bit shy now and they want to bring their hair on fire killer app to the table and ask you how to deploy it? Would, would they be better off going to the workshop in this event or how, how would you suggest people engage with you? So the workshop already happened, I'm afraid, but I think they, it, that it was recorded and it will be re rebroadcast through API days. Uh, but you can always find us at slackcommunity.com. That's your portal to find uh, any meetups near you or if you want to join the online workspace where we, where we chat. If you have uh, more of a, a bug you've encountered with our API or time that you would want to contact developer support, you can find them at feedback at slack.com or there's a neat trick in any Slack workspace. If you type slash feedback, that connects you to our customer support team, including developer support. So if you want to get in touch with a developer community to talk about you know, how you might structure an app and, and that type of conversation, definitely join us through slackcommunity.com. Is, is it possible to put that in the chat just for the people who have come so that they can immediately take some action on that? Kaz did and uh, okay. also added the workshop material. Thanks. All right. Okay. And Kaz and Anko, you're available on LinkedIn, you know, just in case there's some people have got some really, really big ideas. <laughs> yeah, anyway, totally. Uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, you name it. I'm, I'm A. Oberoi basically anywhere you can find uh, a social platform. So, I mean, uh, just on, on this topic, we're quite high level here. We're not going into the details. That's all available. Um, you know, Sort of concluding this, how would you? What tips would you provide to up and coming app developers, or even accomplished app developers, and and, and maybe even non technical people? Any tips on working with a platform? What they can do next to 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 start learning more about it, engaging with it, and discovering how they can improve their enterprise business. So, any any tips? Uh, top tips. Uh, I'll start one with. Yeah, sure. I'll start with check out the templates built into Workflow Builder. Um, I think of it as the best way to learn what the tool is capable of. So the templates will give you um, really common use cases. For example, request an approval or ask for a daily status update, or um, there's several others as well. Uh, but what's really great about those templates is they're ready to go. You just kind of click your way through Workflow Builder input a little bit of information like a channel name or a username um, and your base or and a time and a date for those recurring uh, triggers and you're basically done and you've actually started using the platform already without really having to think too much about it to take it apart and understand how it works you just jump back into workflow builder hit the edit button next to your workflow you'll see the individual steps that that are um, involved in the workflow that you just created and you can drag and drop and add more steps and reconfigure, reposition things. And it actually, uh, for most even non-sophisticated developers, they enjoy just kind of playing around in there. It's, it's really fun to get your workflow published and it gives you a little burst of confetti at the end. Um, and you know, once you've, you've gotten your appetite uh, uh, wet and you're ready to take on a more sophisticated um, there's actually a bunch of developer tools that we've built. So maybe grab your favorite developer friend if you've never looked at code and it's intimidated, if, if it's intimidating to you. But um, I would say check out our GitHub. We have a few really helpful tools if you're even just uh, 
you know, starting off and you're, you're not too afraid of uh, writing a little bit of JavaScript code and in about five or six lines, you can use a tool that we have called Bolt for JavaScript and it's also actually available in other languages. Um, so JavaScript, Python, or Java. Uh, if you can write five or six lines of code, you're actually ready to start using the platform and that's about as simple as it can as it actually is and get started and then you get the confetti right when you deliver something yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay uh kaz any tips top top tip for getting started on this for tech and non-tech yeah for even for non-tech people they're probably choosing the light platforms and lighting you know, services to connect oh. with is really important so to check the platform the service is connected with other services already. So that's a very important kind of foundation. So Slack is connected for, with almost every single services. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah. So that's a, the point to verify before starting doing the, implementing some solution. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. It, it's very useful. I'm making notes as I go along because I'm always looking for the tools in which to build enterprise apps. and. Uh, so, so I think with that, I, we can hang around for a little bit. I would encourage any any questions in the last uh, few minutes because I'm not sure you know it's getting late where, where you are. Um, so thanks very much, everyone, for attending, all the participants and speakers. Um, if there's any other questions, I think we'd just hang around here for the next few minutes. So, so with that, I'll close the session and thank everyone for their participation. I think a lot was covered, and, and some really good tips as well. All Thanks right. so much, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So we'll we hang around for a bit if you want, and uh, unless you're in a hurry. Yeah. No. Okay. So are we broadcasting now? And we're broadcasting, yes. I think it, the broadcast oh. finishes when everyone leaves the room. So let me see. Um, okay. I'll be at the booth. Okay. That's the whole point. I think people are... I'm not used to these online uh, event platforms, but there's real people at the booths, real experts, and free advice. <laughs> so that's so cool. All right, I don't see any more questions. I think there's a few people still in the room, but I think I'd, I'd have to end the session now so we can get on with the other events. So thank you. If you want to share anything, do put it into the chat, and uh, I think it will still be there. Okay. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.